Hello everyone. So, today I am here with a new topic integrated disease surveillance program and national program for prevention of control of deafness. In this program, we will discuss about the objectives of these programs and what are the key points under this. Okay, so, let us start. So, uh, starting with the integrated disease surveillance program, this program was launched by the Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare in November 2004 for the period up to 2010. This project has been extended up to 2012 now. Yes, under this project, this project is with a domestic budget as integrated disease surveillance program under NHM. National Health Mission for all states under budgetary allocation of nearly 640 crores. Yes, after that we will discuss about the points under integrated disease surveillance program and what are the units under this. Okay. So, we have the units at central level, we have the units at district level, at state level. So, central surveillance unit which is monitoring all of the disease patterns. Uh, it is called as CSU, which is in Delhi. Okay. After that, we have the units at state level. So, it is called as state surveillance unit, SSU. Yes. So, it is at all of the states and also including some union territories. And we have some DSU, which is a district surveillance unit. So, they are controlling or uh, they, uh, they are monitoring all of the disease patterns, uh, their control, their prevention, what are the data they are collecting at district levels. So, it is at all districts in our country which has been established under this program, Integrated Disease Surveillance Program. After that, we will see what are the objectives. So, uh, the objectives of Integrated Disease Surveillance Program is the strengthening or maintaining decentralized laboratory. Yes. So, there is a one central unit which is controlling other laboratories. Okay. So, uh, the local laboratories here are known as the decentralized laboratories Yes, or de uh, decentralized laboratory which is based on the IT enabled information communication, information technology. Okay. So, decentralized laboratory based IT enabled disease surveillance system. So, objective uh, objective is to maintaining this, strengthening this, okay. especially for those areas where the disease is spreaded. So, epidemic prone diseases to monitor disease trends. I told you this is for the monitoring of the diseases. Okay. So, what is a pattern of diseases? So, they will see the disease trends and they will detect it, they will respond to outbreak in early rising phase. So, to control it at early phases. Okay. Through the, uh, there is a one team here, uh, which is managing all of these is known as RRT, rapid response team and the members are like doctor, yes, pharmacist, there are some other social activists, they are uh, playing a part in this rapid response team. After that, this is the objective, we will also uh, discuss about the training of the RRT, rapid response team. Yes. So, I hope this is clear to all of you what is the objective of this uh, program, uh, integrated disease surveillance program. Now, see the components, the program components. So, in the uh, integrated disease surveillance program, this is basically for, uh, for collecting the data okay, regarding the disease trends. So, what we want here is the, the components under this integration and decentralization. Yes. So, as I told you before in the objectives also, there is a central unit okay, which is controlling the units at the district level as well as at the state level or other or at other levels also. So, we want the integration in it, work should be in integrity. Yes. There should be the decentralization so that the areas uh, with which uh, the data are uh, to, to take the data is difficult. For that, we need decentralization also of the surveillance activity through establishment of surveillance units. 
yes so this is our first component to make our program to be successful second if we are integrating or decentralizing the units okay so we need the human resources so second uh, component you can see human resource development okay so human resource development means we need doctor we need uh, pharmacists nurses social activists so for all of these if uh, we are making a new plan so uh, accordingly to that plan or for the disease plan how to control it how to uh, prevent the disease at early phases we need the training because for every disease the control is different so training of the state surveillance officers okay this is under a component then district surveillance officers so for uh, for for their training then report uh, rapid response team and other medical and paramedical staff on the basis of the principles of disease surveillance as i told you every disease has a different type of principles how to manage the disease yes so accordingly we have to give the training under this idsp integrated disease surveillance program that how to manage the data how to cure the disease prevent it how to control it yes apart from uh, the components which i have discussed there are some other component as well like use of iec information communication technology for collection so before uh, before this uh, for collection of the data what we are doing in the past times is we are collecting data manually okay now what we are using to collect the data to assemble the data compile the data it is very important to use the technology based system okay so now we have different different softwares uh, with which the data uh, analysis is easy compilation is easy so uh, we are using information communication technology okay for collection for compilation for analysis or to spread it to the public yes for the benefit like what are the numbers going for the disease okay is it rising or it is decreasing okay so we have to check it yes our plans are working well or not or what we have to do new in it then after that strengthening of public health laboratories yes it is also under the integrated disease surveillance program so uh, i am just giving a one example of the malaria detection okay so we are doing the malaria detection we have the units for malaria okay where the uh, we are checking the malaria uh, patients okay like dengue patients there, there could be the another example dengue patients we are detecting so their laboratories we have to strengthen them okay so that the data collection uh, the numbers of the patients we can get or how many are cured how many are doing the follow up so these all data will be taken under this yes after that uh, before this i already told you in uh, the previous programs as well that we need intersectoral coordination means if one laboratory is working well uh, we can't make it uh, uh, we can't make our plan to be successful okay we need the intersectoral coordination mean at the state level every laboratory should work in collaboration then at the state at the uh, at the national level or international level as well what are the new techniques are coming for the screening or the diagnostic facilities we have okay so we need the intersectoral coordination for zoonotic diseases what do you mean by zoonotic diseases here uh the diseases which are spread from animals to the humans which are spreaded by the germs or bacteria viruses okay so for that these are the components okay now after the components uh, there is a data management okay so in the data management under integrated disease surveillance program because under the idsp uh, everything is depend on the data yes so we have to uh, manage the data how will manage the data there are some uh, points written under this so under the idsp data is collected on epidemic prone diseases especially so you can take any example like dengue every time we are saying the spread of the dengue okay there are the cases uh, mean seasonal we will see there is a rise of uh, malaria cases so uh, we need data specially on the epidemic prone diseases yes on weekly basis 
so we have taken like monday to sunday yes uh, after that so this is a first point in the management after that the information is collected on three specified reporting formats there are three types of cases okay first case is s second case is p and third case is l okay what do you mean by s s here is the suspected case yes p is the presumptive case and l is the laboratory case so what is the difference between these cases we'll report all of these three cases first of all s s means the suspected means the patient is showing any symptoms of a particular disease okay so symptoms are very very similar we will suspect it okay we'll we'll put that patient under the suspected cases the symptoms are say then after that p is the presumptive means the initial findings the initial tests are showing the presence of the infection so we'll put under the presumptive but get uh, it is not confirmed from the uh, uh, from the uh, confirmation test okay so this is p in l what happens which is called as a laboratory confirmed cases means the case is showing the patient is showing the confirmation test as well as, as the confirmation test are positive with the initial findings okay so both the test are positive at that time we'll put under laboratory confirmation cases so this is how we have categorized the cases depending on the symptoms or the initial findings or the confirmation yes after that uh, the weekly data gives information on the disease trend and seasonality of course okay a malaria cases are rising uh, only just in a uh, two or three months okay after that it is declining so this is showing yes there is a seasonality in the diseases okay so this is how we are managing the data and how we are interpret interpreting the uh, the uh, nature of the disease okay apart from it what are the other points in the management data management so whenever there is a rising trend of illness okay means the case are increasing so what will uh, 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 what we will do it is investigated by rapid response team okay which are properly trained so in the next further slides i will tell you how uh, who who are responsible to give training to these members so uh, basically here a rapid response teams are uh, investigating these areas or they are providing some diagnostic uh, facilities or the control measures of the outbreak yes now data analysis and actions are being undertaken by respective state or district surveillance units and from the state state or district surveillance unit they are these data is are taken to the central units okay so all of the data is collected at one place now see in the month of june 2016 it is given an uh, 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 time duration at 2016 how many districts have been uh, the part of the idsp so in uh, 2016 nearly 94% districts have reported weekly disease surveillance data yes now see idsp portal so if you will go on these uh, this site www.idspnic.in it will show you this uh, whole portal integrated disease surveillance program portal there you can see the pattern of the diseases how the data data are managed okay so the idsp portal is one of the top portal which has facilities for data entry okay there are reports available outbreak reporting is also there data analysis or training modules are there okay resources related to disease surveillance uh, from the idsp it is taken that 90% of districts are now reporting disease surveillance data in this portal yes so you all can check on this site this www.idsp.nic.in there you can see what are the uh, uh, what is the actual format uh, for entry or the reports or the uh, outbreak reporting okay now coming to the training part so in the training uh, under the idsp uh, you can see there is a three tiered system so this is three tiered system 
Now, master trainee, trainers, state and district surveillance officers, these two and RRT members, yes, rapid response team members, they all are trained by national level institutes, okay. Yes, is this clear? Master trainers, state or district surveillance officers and RRT members. After that, you see medical officers or district lab technicians, these two are trained by master trainers at state level, yes. And after that, you will see health workers or lab technicians and some assistants, they are trained by the district surveillance officers or medical officers at district level. So, their levels are different where they will get the training, okay. Uh, this is uh, all about the IDSP. I hope this program is clear to all of you in this uh, program. On conclusion, I will just say this is for the data, uh, data management means we are taking the data of the diseases, we are finding the trend of the diseases and controlling the disease, yes. After that, after that there is a one program called NPPCD, uh, which means National Program for Prevention and Control of Deafness. Okay. Before reading this program, we will see some values for the deafness, like what is the data for the deafness, yes. So, see, hearing loss is the most common sensory deficit in humans today. As per WHO estimates in India, there are approximately 63 million people, yes, who are suffering from auditory impairment, yes. And if you will see the prevalence means the number of cases, so it is accountable nearly 6.3 percent in Indian population, okay. So this is a big number. Now, now uh, as per the NSSO survey, what, what the survey is saying, there are currently 291 persons per 1 lakh population who are suffering from severe to profound hearing loss. Therefore, we need to make make a program for the deafness, okay, for controlling or preventing the deafness. Now, uh, if you will see uh, the demography, so uh, the percentage uh, of the children is more here. So, what is the age group? 0 to 14 years, okay, they are more prone for this deafness or uh, hearing uh, impairment, okay. With such a large number of hearing impaired, young Indi uh, Indians, it amounts to severe loss to productivity. Of course, their quality of life will be impaired, yes, both physical way as well as economic, okay. It is giving the burden on the state or the country as well, yes. So, uh, we have a program for this, okay, for controlling and prevention. So, what is National Program for Prevention and Control of Deafness? It is implemented by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, okay, this is important here, with the support of DGHS, yes, in which year 2006 to 2007 on a very small uh, scale, means on the pi uh, pilot basis, okay, which is covering nearly 25 districts of 10 states and one union territory and now it has been expanded to 2 to 8 districts, okay, of 27 states, union territories in a phased manner, if you will see up till, till now, yes. Now, what are the goals? So, there are two goals, one is the long term goal and another is the immediate goal. If we achieve the immediate goal, of course, we will uh, we'll think of for the long term objective, yes. So, our objective, long term objective, if you will see to reduce disease burden by 25 percent by the end of 12th 5 year plan, yes. Immediate objectives means uh, which we have the actions we need to take uh, in the field areas means, yes. So, immediately actions what, what we will take. So, our objectives is first to prevent avoidable hearing loss due to disease or injury. There are sometimes trauma or uh, there, there are sometimes injury or some diseases are causing the uh, uh, hearing loss, okay. So, that we can prevent it. So, prevent the avoidable hearing first. Second, whatever the hearing impairment is, we have to identify it in early phase, so that it will not proceed or have to diagnose it, okay. 
will provide the treatment of ear problems which are responsible for complete hair loss okay, and deafness. Now, other, uh, other objectives, it, it is also the part of immediate objectives. So, uh, to medically rehabilitate deaf persons. So, if any, um, any patient is suffering with this problem, okay, uh, this hearing loss, there, uh, there is a requirement of rehabilitation. Okay, so, to revive the life again or to normalize the life. Okay, so, there we need rehabilitation that we have to provide. So, to, next to strengthen the existing intersectoral linkages for continuity. Okay. Intersectoral linkages means we have to associate the different different sectors. Okay. Uh, uh, state to state to uh, country, country to uh, international level. Okay. Then after that to develop institutional capacity for ear care services by providing equipment means hearing aid, yes, to distribute the he hearing aid and if we can provide it at free cost, okay. The material and training personnel should be provided to strengthen whole of the infrastructure, okay. Now, if, we'll, uh, if you will see the uh, achievement or progress under this program, so uh, the achievement uh, the program has been expanded to 228 districts okay, of 27 states or union territory in the phased manner. Yes. Now, what we did under this program is we have provided training, okay, training to health personnel at PHC level, at CHC level, community health care centers, okay, district health care centers, then uh, we have provided the center of excellence also. Okay, at tertiary level, then after that there is a screening camps. So, uh, uh, you have seen uh, there are some camps which are organized on the some of the areas and they are providing the uh, facilities to the people who cannot easily access those facilities. Okay. So, for those we have provided the screening facilities okay, to check uh, either the person is suffering from hearing uh, abnormality or not. Yes. After that procurement of equipment, so we already uh, procured the equipment, yes, we have provided the hearing aids to the patients, so this is all under the equipment part, yes, and uh, apart from the hearing aids, we should have the, uh, 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 we should have uh, some of the uh, screening and diagnostic test facility, yes. Okay, that equipment we should have. So, we have procured them, this is our, under our progress. Recruitment of manpower, so uh, the assistants, okay, there are some uh, social activist assistant and uh, the physicians we have acquired for uh, under this program, yes, doctors, other healthcare professionals, paramedical staff, they all are under this and distribution of the hearing aids. Okay, especially to those people who cannot easily take, who, who cannot easily access it. Yes. After that, the program is expected to generate the following benefits. What are the benefits? So, we will see what are the benefits of this program. First of all, availability of various services, okay, like prevention. This service we are achieving here by counselling. So, uh, there are our doctor, there are our uh, pharmacists, nurses, they are providing the counselling to the patients that how they can uh, avoid this problem or of hearing loss. Okay. Uh, then, if any patient is suffering from this problem, how to identify it at early stages and provide the treatment. Okay. We will also provide the referral. If if any patient uh, is not getting facility at the local level centers or at the PHC, they should be referred to the CHC or the district level centers, district healthcare centers or tertiary healthcare centers okay? and rehabilitation, how to normalize the life okay? for hearing impairment or deafness. Okay? After that, what are the other benefits? They will decrease the magnitude of hearing impaired persons. What they will do? They will also decrease the severity. Why? Because we will identify it at early stages, it will aware the patients. Okay? 
what they will uh, apart from it what they will do they will provide a service network referral system yes the same i told you psc to chc chc to tertiary healthcare centers like this okay so uh, if they will provide the referral uh, referral of course uh, we can uh, reduce the morbidity we can reduce the hearing impairment we have to aware the patients then only the patient will approach because without the active or a passive participation of the patient or the society okay we cannot implement our program to make make it successful after that capacity building at district hospitals to ensure better care whatever the facility or infrastructure we have we have to strengthen it okay thank you so much everyone i hope uh, this is clear to all of you Uh, about the integrated disease uh, surveillance program and the national program for the prevention and control of the disease in the next lecture we'll discuss on the new program so we'll meet in the next session